Gamers. After shipping Mass Effect 3 in 2012, Mass Effect co-creator Casey Hudson and a small group of Bioware developers embarked on a new journey, laying the foundation for an original IP codenamed Project Dylan. The Hudson-led crew at BioWare's Edmonton headquarters hoped to craft the video game equivalent of Bob Dylan, a title the industry would reference and revere for many years. Project Dylan, later dubbed Anthem, got off to a promising start, thanks to an ideation phase brimming with ambitious possibilities. The team's high hopes and equally high morale eventually faded, though, replaced by stress and deep confusion about the end goal. Mismanagement and numerous staff departures left Anthem in limbo for years. While fans and media were being wowed at trade shows with impressive concept art and vertical slices of gameplay, BioWare developers were navigating a production cycle beset by indecision and an undefined vision. It didn't help that similar games such as Destiny and The Division had already set the bar for what players expected from live service experiences. Anthem failed to meet that bar. And while a series of post-launch updates improved surface-level issues, Anthem's core gameplay loop and other fundamental systems demanded an overhaul, the likes of which BioWare had never previously produced. This is the tragedy of Anthem. Upon investigating the behind-the-scenes turmoil that plagued Mass Effect Andromeda, journalist Jason Schreier learned that BioWare wanted to establish a fresh start for its spacefaring saga after Mass Effect 3. Instead of saddling the Edmonton group with a fourth entry, the studio passed the baton to its Montreal-based firm. Meanwhile, Casey Hudson's crew in Edmonton began conceptualizing Project Dylan. In an August 2019 piece for Kotaku, Schreier recounted the claims of 19 developers who either worked on the project or were in close proximity to its production. According to said developers, initial ideas were incredibly ambitious. No one knew what the end result would entail, but a few things seemed clear. First, the team wanted to make an action game and took special care to avoid the sci-fi and fantasy trappings ingrained in Mass Effect and Dragon Age, respectively. BioWare quickly grew attracted to the premise of a hazardous alien planet whose explorable wilderness required players to don robot armor. Thus, thoughts of a less cartoony Iron Man soon rested at the core of the pitch. In an E3 2018 interview, Casey Hudson told Jeff Keighley that BioWare intended to maintain its celebrated storytelling while allowing friends to enjoy narratives together. Hudson further noted how nascent stages involved discussions about foregoing traditional story DLC in favor of sharing content on a regular basis, according to what fans wanted to see. As months of preliminary phases wore on, Hudson and his small crew organized multiple prototypes. A Bermuda Triangle-inspired planet reportedly served as one example. Another developer compared early iterations to Dark Souls and Shadow of the Colossus, wherein the game would challenge players to survive an unforgiving landscape replete with hulking, deadly creatures. Other prototypes centered on dynamic weather and environmental systems, which received a quick tease in BioWare's E3 2014 concept video. None of it made the final build. More or less, the new IP had a foundation by 2014, complete with a framework that necessitated the creation of a narrative moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, and a world worth exploring. Even the gameplay hook had been established. Equipped with an exosuit, BioWare wanted players to embark on expeditions with friends, their journeys taking them into wild areas to survive for as long as possible. In venturing across the terrain, players would use melee combat and guns to battle beasts. Loot mechanics didn't factor into the equation yet, although scavenging alien wrecks in search of parts for upgrading weapons and enhancing the exosuit did count as a significant component. There existed an air of concern as to whether BioWare could actualize its plans in-game. Dynamic environments and huge monsters wouldn't be an issue in controlled spaces, but online play seemed a different matter entirely. Plus, EA's mandate that all of its studios utilize Battlefield developer DICE's Frostbite engine raised additional questions especially since the engine's toolset had proven problematic for Dragon Age Inquisition and Mass Effect Andromeda. Regardless, developers attached to Project Dylan felt enthusiastic, but momentum slowed to a crawl 
not long after Casey Hudson departed in August 2014. Developers insisted Hudson's Mass Effect crew worked like a well-oiled machine. His vision and laser-like focus kept everyone moving towards a singular goal. Conversely, the group responsible for Dragon Age Inquisition meandered from objective to objective before finally reaching the end. The end came at a massive cost, too, primarily because of a grueling development cycle that saw minimal progress until the last year of production. During that time, staff assigned to Dragon Age reportedly endured intense levels of crunch that left many hoping Inquisition would fail and forced leadership to reconsider their managerial practices. The RPG's commercial and critical success then was to some the worst possible outcome. Instead of overhauling internal operations to drastically reduce crunch, much of BioWare's leadership doubled down on BioWare magic. The notion that regardless of tumultuous development, things would always work out in the final stretch. Allegedly, it didn't take long after Hudson's departure for Project Dylan to dissolve into a similar state of disarray. Hudson drafted a letter to his colleagues prior to exiting the studio, acknowledging the complete foundation upon which Project Dylan stood. He felt confident in BioWare Edmonton's ability to proceed on an endeavor that could redefine interactive entertainment. Under the leadership of former EA producer John Warner, this energy kept pace for a while, and team morale continued to rise. Some developers posited high spirits were due to everyone being on the same page, yet translating their vision to a playable space proved arduous. Pre-production persisted, but not every prototyped concept practically fit into the game's design. In pursuit of seamless traversal, for instance, BioWare experimented with flight-enabling exosuits. The team added and removed flying on several occasions, as the mechanics were difficult to get right. Constant adjustments to navigation meant the terrain regularly underwent alterations to accommodate the redesigns. Developers tested procedural systems as well, though one staff member claimed such additions never felt fun. Early 2015 marked the time at which Project Dylan's narrative received more focus. Thus, Dragon Age scribe David Gator hopped aboard. Since his writing style mirrored other Bioware tales, with alien artifacts and the like, Gator's treatment of the story wasn't well received. It also lacked any resemblance to initial concepts. Most staffers wanted a substantial departure from traditional Bioware storytelling. However, Gator told Kotaku that designer-director Preston Watamaniak instructed him to devise something in the realm of science fantasy. Naturally, the writer followed suit. Though some of his colleagues lamented what they deemed a Dragon Age-like plot, Gator said no one articulated their preferences beyond insisting the story differ from past Bioware games. Gator left in 2016 and recalled his time on Project Dylan as frustrating. He wouldn't be the only one to express as much. Creative leaders installed in Hudson's absence never exhibited a core vision. According to some people familiar with the situation, management's indecision served as the root cause of the end product's many failures. Project leads often chased fresh ideas as opposed to settling on one. Meetings that feature disagreements about gameplay mechanics regularly concluded without high-level staff making an executive decision. As a consequence, the team made little progress between 2015 and 2016. EA's mandated use of Frostbite exacerbated production woes tenfold. As an engine built for first-person shooters, Frostbite was devoid of even the basic features needed for a Bioware project, namely a save, load system, and third-person camera. Such necessities had to be constructed from the ground up, and though Frostbite allowed for the incorporation of vast levels ripe with detail, it lacked the tools to support ideas the crew spent years prototyping. In turn, survival and environment-based elements fell to the cutting room floor. Frostbite additionally introduced technical errors that took too long to fix, dragging out processes that typically required simple resolutions. To make matters worse, senior developers decided to forego transferring over systems built for Inquisition and Andromeda, figuring an RPG's inventory system, for example, might hinder an online shooter. After a while, BioWare began taking pointers from other persistent adventures. Developers recalled the mechanics of Destiny acting as inspiration, though they allege studio leadership prohibited its mention. Management's refusal to allow discussion about Destiny handcuffed the project further, as it ensured BioWare wouldn't learn from Bungie's triumphs and missteps. 
The end of 2016 marked the title's fourth year in pre-production. BioWare hardly had anything of substance to show for it, evidenced by the Christmas demo that developers played over the break. Flying mechanics had previously fallen by the wayside, leaving what a handful of developers described as a bland experience. EA's Top Brass was similarly unimpressed. During the window of Mass Effect Andromeda's March 2017 release, executive VP of EA Worldwide Studios Patrick Soderlund played the Christmas demo. Three Kotaku sources claimed he expressed disappointment, particularly with regards to the visuals. Select higher-ups from BioWare flew to DICE headquarters in Stockholm following Soderlund's visit. Upon learning more about Frostbite's inner workings, BioWare crafted a new build. For six weeks, the group crunched, even overhauling art assets while preparing another version. Though its implementation could beget game-breaking issues, BioWare begrudgingly reincorporated flying mechanics to please Soderlund. The executive's glee at seeing the new demo in action sealed the deal on flying's permanence. BioWare's Christmas build laid the groundwork for the E3 2017 reveal. By then, Project Dylan had morphed into Beyond, a name that exemplified the promise of entering beyond the walls of a safe haven to explore external dangers. In the days leading up to E3 2017, EA informed BioWare of its inability to secure the Beyond trademark. Consequently, Anthem stepped up to bat, despite having no conceptual meaning. Eventually, the studio contrived a story around the title, labeling a powerful force known as the Anthem as the source of creation. Irrespective of the finer details, Anthem's unveiling generated plenty of excitement. However, those with insider knowledge stated that none of the shooter's features were set in stone, hence the drastic differences between the reveal gameplay and retail version. Even as Anthem entered full production post-E3 2017, narrative and gameplay changes persisted. That summer in general weighed heavy on BioWare due to the passing of lead designer Corey Gasper and multiple departures, including general manager Aaron Flynn, who Casey Hudson returned to replace. The unfinished nature of myriad key features, as well as EA's insistence on shipping Anthem by the end of March 2019, intensified the pressure. In spite of management's emphasis on so-called BioWare magic, many developers knew Anthem was in trouble. This especially held true for BioWare Austin staffers who transitioned to Anthem after helping complete Andromeda. Having produced an online project in Star Wars The Old Republic, BioWare Austin's expertise should have proven invaluable. Ultimately, their feedback went ignored. Another major shakeup resulted in a separate BioWare team abandoning early work on Dragon Age 4 to guarantee all hands were on deck. The Dragon Age project's former executive producer Mark Dara stepped in to helm Anthem over game director John Warner. With 16 months to go before launch, Dara established a single goal, ship the game. Dara reportedly gave Anthem the direction it had been missing for years. No longer did indecision waste precious time, of which there remained very little. Progress from that point forward desperately needed to pick up the pace. As the opening months of 2018 arrived, central components like story missions, loot, and javelin abilities still weren't fully formed. All of this and more, according to developers, came together in the last 12 to 16 months. The years-long failure of management inevitably culminated in an unhealthy crunch period, whereby many BioWare employees were forced to take stress leave because of mentally debilitating work conditions. Emotional breakdowns became the norm, alongside stress casualties, a term coined for those so affected by stress that they either left for several months or simply never returned. Anthem launched in February 2019 to the lowest review scores in studio history. An uninspired story, repetitive missions, and a scarcity of worthwhile content counted among a few of the criticisms leveled at the shared world shooter. Various post-launch patches stabilized the experience and incorporated player feedback. Bigger updates went live in subsequent months, adding extra campaign missions, world events, and new features. Such changes fail to maintain the dwindling player base's interest, though. Delays and upsets to the post-launch model also plagued Anthem before BioWare detailed a complete overhaul. Publicly referred to as Anthem Next, or Anthem 2.0, the next phase, announced in early 2020, aims to reinvent the core gameplay loop. However, whether these alterations constitute Anthem's saving grace, 
remains to be seen. Thank you for watching. We'd like to take this time to thank, by name, the generous patrons who have pledged to our Hall of Fame reward tier. Alex Moretti, Caleb Shishkifich, Maktoum Saeed Al Maktoum, and those currently subscribed to our producer reward tier. Dari Rap Sikurtson, EmuMovies.com, Fernando Lopez Ojeda, Lame Game Man, Milkshake, Schizo Lingvo. If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel and backing us on Patreon.